still one of my favorite CSS frameworks to use on a new application. Because I'm not a designer, it's hard for me to make a layout that's really pretty and looks good and just works. And I do like Bootstrap because of its consistency and its ability and flexibility to customize its view so it doesn't look like every Bootstrap site out there. So in this episode, we're going to look at what it takes to add Bootstrap into your application and just some of the tips and tricks I learned over the few years with working with Bootstrap. So to get started, we'll add the bootstrap gem into our gem file. And to get this, we'll be pulling from the railsassets.org. So we'll set our source to railsasset.org. And then if you want to use bootstrap version four, which it's currently in alpha six, you can append the version number. So we'll add the rails assets bootstrap, and then we'll say that we want the alpha version. If you don't specify the version, then it'll default to the latest version, which currently is 337. And Bootstrap does have some other dependencies. It does still rely on jQuery. And then it also relies on Tether for tooltips. So once you add in your gems, be sure to run Bud on Restart your Rails application. Next in your application JS file and the Tether references, then we can also add in require Bootstrap. And then in the application CSS file, we can add the require Bootstrap. And then in the application layout file, we can set the viewport. And this will be important for the display of the responsiveness of the website. So here we can see an example without the viewport, how a page would render, and then with the viewport meta tag, how it would render. And some of the best documentation for Bootstrap is its own website. So if you go to getbootstrap.com, you can go under CSS or components to get the list of the current version of Bootstrap. However, I'm going to click up in the blue bar to get the Bootstrap 4 documentation. I'll click on documentation and over on the right hand side, we can select the different kind of components we want to research. So in our case, if we want to create a navigation bar, we can go look up the nav bar on the components and then it'll show us examples on what the nav bar looks like and how we can implement it into our application. So I'm going to copy this bit of code and because this is coming from the bootstrap version 4 documentation, we should be able to just place it right into our application. And to keep our layouts file fairly simple, I'll just create a navigation file and we'll render that partial. And then we can create the layout file navigation and we're just going to paste in our example code. So come into the application now, you'll now see we have our nav bar and then we have our yielded body. And typically you're going to wrap your views within a div tag and this will have a class called container. So if we navigate back to our application now and we refresh, we now see our hello world. So next let's look at making a modal within our application. So we can click this launch demo modal and then it'll just display a bit of text and then fade the background. We can then hit close and it'll dismiss the modal. So here's the relevant code. And again, this is found on the component section on the bootstrap documentation. We can just copy this bit of code and then add it into our application and we'll just paste it right into our view. So now we should expect to see our hello world and then also a launch button for the model. Going back to our application, we can refresh the page and now we see the launch demo model. And when we click on it, we now get the model to pop up. So this seems like quite a bit of code in our view just to display a modal. And I really don't like this because a lot of this is going to be repeated throughout our application. So let's create a class helper that we can just really minimize a lot of this stuff down and just keep the important bits that changes between each modal. So I found this bootstrap view helpers gem a few years ago and it hasn't been updated since 2013. However, there are still some really good things in here that we can use. So if we go under the app and then helpers, we can go to the bootstrap folder and then we can look at something like the modal. Now there's a lot of things that have changed with the modal. So some of these options just are no longer valid. However, we are able to still kind of take this code and then modify it to work with Bootstrap 4. So one of the things I found that has not changed is this common helper. So I'm going to just copy this path and get the raw file and I'm going to pull this into my application. So under my app helpers bootstrap, I created a common helper.rb and I simply just pasted in all that code into this file. I then also copied the modal helper and I tweaked it so it'll work with the bootstrap. 
So the Model Helper is kind of complex, so I'm not going to go into all what it does, but I will cover just a few of the key things. So the entry point is Model, and from here we'll pass in a block and we can call in some of the other helpers, like the Model Header, the Model Title, the Model Body, or the Model Footer. So to recreate this Model, we can simply just call Model, and then we had to give it an ID. So in our case, I'm just going to call this Rails Model, and then we can pass in a block, and then we can create our header. And we don't need a block here, and I'm just gonna give this a title, Model Rails Title, and then we can pass in our body, and the body is where we would have a lot of the content or form fields. And we can pass in a block, and this block, we would just render out whatever content we want to display. So to keep it consistent with the previous example, we would just have the three dots. And then we can add our footer, and the footer is a little bit more complicated, but it's just like the body where we want to just display our save changes button. And a few differences from the original bootstrap views helper is that I just created this bootstrap generator and it's just going to reduce a lot of the lines that we have for some of the simple methods. So we can just pass in the options or arguments, then the class that we want to wrap this in and the type of element that we'll use and then simply pass in the block. So for our modal footer, you'll see that I already rendered out the button close tag, and when we render out the content, we had the button close, and then we also have the content. And there's also a handy trigger method that we can use to create a link that will display the modal. So now we can just create a modal trigger, and then we have to give it a name, and then we can call href, and then the reference, which is the ID tag of our modal. And we can also give this a class with the buttons. So going back to our application, if we refresh, we still have our own model, and then we can click to close this, and then click on the Rails model to launch the new one. So essentially, we've just recreated all of this text. We can reduce this down to something that's much more maintainable. And one of the new features is the bootstrap cards, and this is to replace the panels. So the code for the cards is fairly simple, where you just have a outer element card, and then you can pass in an image class with the class card image top, and then a card block, and within the card block, you would put in a title and your text. So to do something like that within the bootstrap helpers here, we can create a method called card, and then we would enter the class card, and then we would create a sub tag card block. And if you do need to use the image tags at the top, then you can create the card block as its own separate method, and then you can just simply add in the images under the card block. We then can create our card header, title, subtitle, body, list, and list items, and each one of these we pass in the appropriate classes and the elements that these would be attached to, and then we can just use this handy bootstrap generator, which if we look under the common helper, we can see what this bootstrap generator is doing. So it's just taking in a list of options, and it's basically going to create a class and array of items from the options, and then we pass in the bootstrap class, so we ensure that class is added into our list, and then if a block is given, then we would display the block, otherwise we would shift the arguments, and then we would create our content tag with our element, make sure it's a symbol, and then pass in the options, and then render out our content block. So displaying cards is very simple. We can call card, then we can pass in a block, and this block is going to be the contents of the card. So we can then call card header, then we can also call our card body. And with the body, we don't have to pass in a block if we just want to pass in some simple strings, but you are able to still pass in a block here as well. So going back to our application and refreshing the page, you now see that we have our card. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.